here on The Colour of Country Life. Good to be catching up again with Justin Clancy, member for Albury. How's it going there, Justin? Yeah, it is cold and wet, Ricky, but uh, but that's winter and it's um, yeah, it's good uh, around here. It's uh, obviously, you probably don't want to get too much rain, but it's certainly good to get a bit of moisture and um, you know, it just really helps our season for our farmers at this stage, Ricky. Yeah, it sure does and helps the storages as well for those downstream looking forward to some water coming down the river as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, after a few uh, few lean years, it's certainly good to see the storage is uh, filling up, that's for sure. All right, let's talk about uh, recycling. A couple of initiatives you've been talking about recently. First of all, the Corowa Return and Earn. Tell us more about that. Yeah, Ricky, the, uh, look, the Return and Earn has been a, a really important part, part of the circular economy. Uh, and there's, you know, the container deposit scheme's been in for a few years now. The really big thing is, is trying to make things a little bit easier for our, you know, for our people to use. And so there's a a bulk depot now at Corowa. We've just had one go in at Aubrey uh, in at Lavington. This makes a big difference. And I've seen it firsthand, Ricky. Instead of having to stand there and put them in one by one, you're able to drop them off, get to bulk collection, makes life much more easier for you as the person dropping them in. Uh, and it continues to do a great thing for our environment. Well, that's good. And something else that's been a good environmental initiative has been the uh, banning of plastic bags, which regardless of what you think about the initiative, I think New South Wales is now the, was the final state to implement this, uh, something every state and territory in Australia now has in force. Yeah, look, again, and, and to your point, you know, obviously that's been, uh, for New South Wales, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming in that regard. It's there now. Uh, I think our I think our people too. We, you know, we understand that that's that's part of it. We you know, we see the issues around plastics in um, you know in our waterways. We know the issues that that causes, Ricky. So, in that regard, um, again, fits in with the the process around the CDS ban on single use plastics. Uh, and you know, I, I know it's a transition and a change for our people, but it is a positive change that I know a lot of our community are, are embracing. And I understand there's some more bans coming along as well from the state government uh, in terms of other single-use plastics and things to again take them out of landfills and out of the environment. Yeah, big part of that from my perspective too, Ricky, is make sure that you are working with your small businesses to um, to help modify, adapt to it. Uh, you know. And make sure you're signalling in advance where things are, are headed, so that we can all transition uh, effectively in that regard. Uh, last thing we want to do is see you know small businesses hit with this uh, you know with a uh, sudden unannounced change. Uh, this has been a, a conversation, a journey over a period of time, uh, making sure that we we're, we are adapting uh, you know methodically in that regard. Well, speaking of big signalling in advance, uh, the Federation Council's put out, I guess, a draft budget, which I know is a different limb or area of government, but it does sort of speak to the, the parlous position some councils are in unless they can hike up their rates, but some people can ill afford a rapid increase in rates. They're talking about 10 to 12% increases in the, the three out years of a five-year plan. What role can state governments play in terms of helping our councils manage their, you know, among other things, their road burdens? Yeah, Ricky, and look, first thing in that point, that regard, everyone understands, you know, that absolutely the pressures in, uh, on cost of living, uh, and and I suppose in that sense too, I, I do appreciate our councils do have cost pressures as well, uh, and that uh, you know we understand in that regard that uh, we want our budgets to be working, our councils to be working within budget, making sure that they are doing uh, their best to provide value for their their ratepayers in that regard, uh, and I suppose one thing with rate increases is uh, we can all understand that if we are seeing the outcomes. And, and the big part of that is, uh, say, for example, roads, uh, you know, coming from rural or regional areas, uh, we see the damage done to our local roads. We want to see the investment there. A big part of that, and Federation's been a recipient of a significant funding from the New South Wales State Government when it comes to road funding, uh, and I continue to advocate for road funding for our regional communities. It's, it's a big part of living in our regional communities. Big part of that is too. There has been significant investment there from the New South Wales State Government over the last few years. Uh, there's always more uh, investment required in that regard, Ricky, and that's something that, as a regional MP, I'm uh, very keen to advocate for making sure that we get ongoing funding for our road systems for our local councils. Well, speaking of funding and budgets, the uh, state budget for the um, your your party in government, the Liberal Party, is coming up in uh, just about 15 days' time. And anything you've been pushing hard for, or that you're hoping to see in that state budget? Uh, the big, the big thing, Ricky, is investment in health, and uh, you know we, that that's off significant investment over the last, uh, you know, last ten years in government. But we know that the pandemic has had significant pressure on our health system. We want to see uh, investment so that we can respond to uh, the pressures that are acting on our health system. And from a regional area point of view, Ricky, you know, uh, the isolated patient uh, accommodation transport scheme. 
want to see investment in that, want to see investment in our, our human resources and our nursing and staffing so that we've got uh, the people there to do the job uh, that we need to do in healthcare. So uh, in that sense, over the weekend, the, the investments announced for uh, for health more generally, specifically for the ambulance system as well, 2,000 extra staff for New South Wales Ambulance. So this is the government saying, OK, the pandemic has been a significant pressure on our health system uh, and we're responding to that. Yeah, I just noticed with that ambulance announcement, it's well over a billion dollars being invested. But uh, are there any ambulance stations coming in your electorate? I saw Norellan mentioned there, but I don't think it's the Norellan that's in the southern part of New South Wales. No, so there's still to announce the ambulance systems that will be redeveloped. We'll be making sure, you know, across our region, there's uh, places like uh, Tumut that are getting a new ambulance station, uh, Ricky. So, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, that the regional areas are benefiting from this significant investment just as much as the metropolitan areas. And just lastly, I imagine you were pleased to see your uh, federal colleague, Susan Lee, appointed Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party. Yeah, and Perrin Davey is Deputy Leader of the Nationals as well, Ricky. So I think in that sense... Uh, really important to make sure that regional areas are getting, uh, you know, getting representation. Uh, and in that regard, Southern Riverina as well. So uh, both Perrin and Susan are well aware of the, the you know, the Southern Re- Riverina, the importance of this, this community to uh, the national economy. Uh, so, it's, you know, in that sense, I uh, want to make sure that those people are, are there advocating for our community. And I know Susan and Perrin will be doing that. All right, thanks again, Justin. We look forward to catch up with you and see what the re- coming to the region in the state budget. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Ricky. Take care.